Now I'd like to call on Mr. Whitman to make his opening statements. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Ranking Member Brown, thank you so much uh, for taking the time this morning to provide the opportunity for this hearing, and I appreciate the opportunity to be part of it. And as I've mentioned to folks here, I think this is an issue that's very important uh, to both uh, myself and to my constituents. And you know, most people have probably never heard of a Menhaden, uh, but it is vital in our region. It's a vital part of our history. It's a vital part of our ecology and the livelihood of the Chesapeake Bay. And a little area of Virginia called the Northern Neck, which is my home, is the center of this Menhaden fishing industry. And just to give you a little little history, I worked worked on the water for a number of years. In fact, uh, for a short period of time, I actually worked on a Menhaden boat, and it was at that time that I met my wife. So I have a particular uh, uh, affinity to, <laughs> to 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 the fishery, and it's a uh, it's it's a uh, it's a great great industry in our area, and. I'd like to go on record as opposing H.R. 3840 and H.R. 384, and I'm not the only one. I would ask uh, unanimous consent to include letter letters from Governor Tim Kaine and several other local and state officials who also oppose these bills. No objection, so ordered. Thank you, Madam Chairman. And I don't think this is the right approach to dealing with the fishery to go ahead and shut it down. And you know, I've reached reached out to uh, to both the gentleman from Maryland and the gentleman from New Jersey to share my concerns with these bills. And I appreciate their their uh, consideration and their understanding of the of the complexity of this issue. So I, I, I'm appreciative of their words and and looking at all the issues that we have to deal with here. I want to talk about a couple of points. One is the importance to our region, omega protein is the sole commercial menhaden reduction fishery here on the East Coast. And in our area, it employs uh, 300 folks directly. And that's a vitally important part of our economy. There are also ancillary jobs, people that work with Omega that provide an additional 700 jobs. And in an area of a small population in a rural area where our livelihood is farming, fishing, and forestry, these jobs are extraordinarily important. And today I want to point to the audience. I know that there are a number of members here of 135 United Food and Commercial Workers Local 400 Union. They came all the way up from Reedville today, and I'd like, like to ask them to stand if, 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 if they would for a minute. Thank you. Kenny Pinker's here. Kenny, Kenny has been been a leader there uh, throughout the years with the union, and a great, great individual. It's worked very, very hard to make sure that uh, that this livelihood is maintained for the area. Gentlemen, I thank you for for coming today. Uh, the Menhaden industry in Northumberland County is the biggest employer. There are 12,800 people in this small county, so you can see, with over a thousand jobs related to this industry, it is vitally important. If if we were to shut down this industry, it would lead to a major uh, economic impact there. It's also an important product. If we look at Menhaden and the products that come from Menhaden, I'm willing to bet that everybody at some point in their life has come in contact or has used a product uh, that is that is rendered from Menhaden. And um, we all know about the uh, omega-3 fatty acids that are derived from Menhaden that are that are taken today by a number of folks to make sure that they. Uh, uh, create a healthy, a healthy state for themselves, especially with their heart and other bodily body functions. Uh, the fish meal and fish oil are contained in animal feed, including livestock, poultry, aquaculture. And remember, we actually do use these fish to produce other fish. So just because they're not in the belly of a rockfish doesn't mean that they aren't there to help produce seafood in other ways. Also, uh, they're used in premium pet foods. Anybody that has an animal today that has a healthy animal has one uh, due in, in, in a significant way to these omega-3 fatty acids, and they have many other industrial uses. We talk about this issue also. We, we, we want to make sure that we have a sustainable fishery. I agree with my colleagues from Maryland and New Jersey, and that is the focus here needs to be on making sure that we have a sustainable fishery. And if you look at the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission scientific stock assessments that are peer-reviewed, it's clear, it says in there, the Atlantic Menhaden populations are healthy and that they're not being overfished. And if you look at some of the numbers, we need to back off and look at a little bit of the science here. And, and having come from a fisheries management background and schooling in my undergraduate years, if you look at the numbers today, population fecundity is estimated at 150 percent of its target. And fecundity is the ability of these fish through the year classes to reproduce. So it's much higher than what the target is. And the coastwide fishing mortality, you heard earlier, the coastwide fishing mortality is 0.5, and that's the lowest level since 1955. 
So granted, f fish are being taken from, from the reduction industry, but the total fishing mortality is less than it was since 1955, and there have been cycles of abundance of these fish. I also want to point out, too, that the harvest in 2007 was higher than in 2006, which is when the discussion began about what should we do in managing Menhaden. And the projected harvest for 2008 is even higher. So if there's a problem with the fishery, then you certainly wouldn't see uh, a greater harvest. If you look at it from a policy standpoint, um, you heard earlier, the, it, we really need to look across the board about how we manage fisheries. If we are going to come to the Congress each time uh, we feel that a fishery should be managed in a different way, especially outside the recommendations of our commissions, which this body puts in place to do these, uh, to make these decisions, especially based on science, then I think we're sliding down a slippery slope. I know that uh, Congressman Pallone has a bill in to extend the time that the summer flounder fishery can be recovered. That fishery is shown to be stressed. Uh, I don't think he would be very happy if we came in and said, let's just shut down this, the, 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 the summer flounder fishery. I know the economic impact that that has uh, to the state of New Jersey. So I wanted to make sure we looked at that. I wanted to go back, too, and look at the, uh, the, the total efforts being made on this. A couple of years ago, the state of Virginia, the state of Maryland got together to try to come up with a, a cooperative effort as to how we could uh, agree to manage this fishery. And, both Governors Ehrlich and Governors Kane agreed on that. We had a number of other folks, recreational fishermen, the Coastal Conservation Association, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, labor unions, all came together to agree to this compromise cap. So we've had regional agreement that this cap should be put in place as a precaution uh, to make sure that we know how to manage uh, this fishery and make sure that we don't put it in, in a state of, of danger. And uh, ASMFC members offered near unanimous support for the plan. So the folks on the commission from all these different states were nearly unanimous. There was only one person that voted in abstention. Everybody else voted in, in agreement. So there are also currently studies going on addressing a number of the concerns that my colleagues spoke about, and that is determining the abundance of Menhaden in the Chesapeake Bay, uh, looking at recruitment of juvenile Menhaden, that is how many small fish do we have, how many actually get to spawning age, understanding the predator-prey link, how, what role do they play with rockfish and with other fish that are important in the bay, and to better understand the migration patterns of Menhaden, and also to evaluate the socioeconomic impact of the fishery, in addition to looking at the science about what role do Menhaden play in the bay, in the food chain there. And I, I certainly agree that water quality is an issue. I think as important as looking at the Menhaden is to make sure that other efforts in the bay keep the nutrients from, grow, from going in. It seems to me that the better effort is to keep the nutrients from grow, going in rather than relying on a fish uh, to vacuum clean up a lot of the algae there that doesn't have any food value for fish. So anyway, Madam Chairman, I hope that those, that those will be part of those issues will be part of the discussion today, and I, I, I appreciate the indulgence of my colleagues and, and look forward to hearing from our panelists.